Okay, so today we are going to just uh, briefly look at the basics as we discussed yesterday the five modules in this subject. We will spend some time on the first module. So, the first module we are going to have a brief introduction of uh, various uh, types of foundations for offshore structures as well to some extent coastal structures. As you can see, I have just briefly uh, trying to introduce. So, you can see the difference between uh, coastal and offshore so that you can appreciate what difficulty we will face during the design of uh, uh, you know deep foundations. And then we will go on to a bit on uh, construction sequence which will give you an idea how we can actually differentiate between shallow and deep foundation. Then we will look at some of the codes and then uh, the method of design that is the most critical one to complete. So, I try to do this within uh, next few hours uh, probably within two weeks and followed by we will introduce uh, you know brief idea about how these soil formations takes place over the period of time uh, and the types of soil formations. So, that you can appreciate uh, as a material for engineering how you can quantify the characteristics for strength. So, that is the idea behind you know basically uh, you know the different types of formations and then we will take forward with uh, you know, the engineering properties and how do we arrive at them either we do field testing or uh, the testing in the laboratory and how do we bring the samples to the lab. So, basically the, the soil investigation part is, is quite important in the whole process of uh, project development because that is where uh, you know most of the information is coming from and if the information is incorrect it could lead to a, a wrong direction in the design. So, the soil investigation is a, is a primary part in fact that is the first activity you will uh, carry out when you are thinking of uh, development of any project basically uh, to go forward which type of structure you would like to place on this place. For example, yesterday we were talking about gravity structure versus the fixed platform. Depending on the type of soil, soil layers, uh, how far soft soil or whether the strong soil is on the surface, this will completely change what type of structure you can actually plan for the site. So, that is why the first activity that you will be planning is to find out what type of soil, soil investigation is integral part of the uh, the design process. We will just quickly look at uh, why we need a foundation. I think we spent a lot of time yesterday discussing about low transfer uh, from structure superstructure to the ground. So, you can see the evolution of various types of foundations that we require in terms of transfer of load. So, if you look at a, a single story building versus multi story building versus a coastal structure where uh, you have several activities. I think some of you might have seen Port and Harbor. If you have visited uh, either Chennai port or other ports, you could see structures on the coastline, which makes them a interface between land and sea. So, that you can bring in ships, you can bring in uh, uh, floating systems to a stationary position to transfer cargo, men and material. So, basically you can see a Port and Harbor structure is constructed near coast just because we need an interface because the interface in nature is not very good. For example, if you want to bring a, um, a boat near the beach, maybe yes possible, but if it is a big ship, it will get grounded. So, you cannot move. So, that is why you need to create an interface with sufficient water depth wherein you can go there. So, that is that is the idea of the uh, port and harbors jetties. So, you can see here variety of uh, ideas can be uh, uh, looked at. For example, you can also do a pile foundation for this small building, but you need to think about the necessity. Do we need it? You know, the load is quite small for a two story building. I do not think you will have a huge load, just a brick wall, floor loads. So, you do not need a pile foundation. Whereas, if you if it is a multi story building and the loads are concentrated, multi fold increase in the loads will cause excessive deformation to the soil just below, maybe a soft soil or uh, maybe a strong soil will make the difference whether you need a pile foundation or shallow footing. In some cases, if the soil is good, you can still go for a very good uh, footing type of foundation, but then you need to look at the horizontal stability, whether you are able to provide that with such type of foundations. In many cases, you know basically if it is a high rise building, you will go for pile foundation to get both vertical equilibrium and the horizontal equilibrium. So, if you look at the right side, what we are trying to do is basically shift ideas if you look at offshore platform you can think of going for a shallow foundation yes if the soil is very good 
but then the stability for horizontal and overturning needs to be established which we will talk about in detail. So, you can see here the type of construction that we are looking at is completely different. If you look at this building versus you could have this building as big as an offshore platform like we have shown some pictures earlier, but then you can see here the, the loading is different there is no wave loads whereas, when you come to offshore platform you got a large amount of horizontal loads compared to onshore structures. So, the design shift is required. So, that is why the, the, the foundation what we are looking at for any type of structure is integral part of the structure itself you cannot actually separate them. So, you need to understand the behavior of structure as well the, the foundation. So, that you could design all depends on what is the subsurface condition. I have just put some typical uh, uh, profile you see here soft soil, medium soil and then bearing stratum and the hard rock. Typically this will be a kind of idea that you will encounter in many places, but not necessarily that uh, in this kind of sequence you will see some places suddenly a hard rock in between or a very stiff soil and then followed by or underlined by a uh, other medium characteristic material. But so, in such type of places you will have difficulties in installation which we will talk about it in a later time. So, the need of foundation is very important what we want to try and transfer the load without causing problem to the structure. So, what are the problems for example, you take a simple single story brick walled building if the structure settles vertically just because the soil is too soft. So, what will happen basic idea is the structure will start sowing cracks if there is a differential settlement if it is a uniform settlement nothing will happen in fact simply will not be showing any cause of concern except the building is going underground. So, the next time when you want to go inside the building you will walk downwards is not it which is not very good. So, excessive deformation vertically even though it is uniform not preferred by because we are going to occupy the building. So, it is going down, but no guarantee that the deflection or displacement will be very uniform. You will see a small difference immediately you will see that the architectural finishes or even structural elements will start showing cracks. So, one, one of the important criteria is displacement based criteria to limit the deformation of the soil is within the limit. So, that the structure does not show any kind of distress against the loading that is going to be survived for during the design life. So, we need to just look at one by one and basically that is the need of the foundation. The foundation of variety of kinds can be developed what is our idea is to make sure that the functional requirements are not violated. For example, you design a residential building and that purpose for which it is built has to be served. If it is offshore platform you are building it for drilling you are building it for production. So, basically we need to look at functional requirements it could be it could be different for each type of category. For example, residential building we do not want a crack of uh, any kind because you will be afraid the population will not be guaranteed of safe survival. Whereas, you go to offshore platform deflection of a meter also can be accommodated because it is a different type of structure different class of material used you will not find any cracks there. So, that means there is no uniform requirement of uh, design requirement for shallow foundation pile foundation and same pile foundation for different types of structures will have different types of requirement. For example, you use a pile foundation for buildings you will restrict the horizontal displacement to 5 mm. Whereas, if you use the pile foundation to offshore structures you will restrict nothing because we are not worried about horizontal displacement what we are worried about is the vertical capacity and the horizontal displacement will cause more stresses. So, you will have to provide sufficient material strength to take care of the stresses. So, that is where you will find uh, you, you could have multiple solutions for a same location depending on what type of structure you are building. For example, if you are building a uh, factory building on shore you know the factory building can have cranes moving cranes or uh, UOT cranes they cannot sustain even a smaller displacement differential. For example, from left side to right side less than 2 mm the design criteria is 2 mm because if you have a differential settlement of the building by 5 mm the crane will get stuck it cannot move. So, such type of places you design a foundation where it does not deflect more than 2 mm. So, you can see such type of design changes. So, same place 
if you look at uh, uh, another different types of building where crane is not required you don't need to design so stringent requirement so you can change your design criteria so that's where the type of foundation changes from one type to other depending on what is required for the design in this we are going to not discuss buildings bridges and on source structures what we are going to look at uh, three categories you know retaining walls is part of coastal development i think most of the places if you go to port and harbors we call it key walls retaining walls just to retain the earth from falling down so that you can bring the ships closer to the coastline or jetty structures basically uh, um, structures constructed slightly away from coast you will see some photographs later on you can see that uh, the ships can be berthed against such structures slightly away because water depth near the coast is very small then you can transfer the cargo by other means either by constructing a bridge or by pipelines then the last one category is the offshore platforms wherein uh, we use it for oil and gas exploration activities just briefly uh, the purpose for the coastal structures sea walls primarily for coastal protection i think you can go around uh, many fishing villages you will see that the erosion is happening if you travel to north chennai you know so these sea walls are uh, primary part of coastal protection for you know the coastal villages coastal structures sometimes you may have uh, uh, refineries you may have power plants which are located most of the time near the coast because of the availability of large volume of sea water for cooling purposes that's why most of the power plants will be located near the coastline so you know how to protect such type of facilities against erosion you try to build either sea wall or breakwaters just to divert the energy to the other side and then jetties and harbors which are primary part of the sea to land interface you know you might see so many uh, cargo boats all around the world you can go around east coast many of them also commercial harbors which are meant for uh, you know several commercial purposes including tanker oil tankers you have uh, container bus and then passenger bus sometimes you have a typical sea wall you can see here on the left side picture is just a concrete wall nothing else but what it does is it is doing two things one is retaining the soil on this side exposed to the sea activity if this wall is not there every day some soil will be carried away and you will see the land is slightly reducing every time and then and it does also retain the earth and form a stable ground here otherwise you will not be able to use this particular place and that is the the idea behind construction of sea wall many places you will see of different kind you see here this sea wall is made up just only rocks just rock dumped around the coastline which gives you in such type of of course all depends on the durability and the sea conditions here if the sea condition is very high then this one this kind of uh, rock dumping will not work you may require construction of this kind you can see this is one of the jetty which was built several years back you can see there are two jetties around and there is a connectivity between the jetty and the this is actually an island in so you can see the oil transfer so this is a place where the ships will come and they will transfer the oil from the ship to the shore and this oil goes to the refinery which is located slightly away so this water depth is 25 meters not small so you can see here why the jetty is constructed slightly away is just to make sure that the ships have sufficient depth to come there of course you could do one thing you can construct a jetty very close to the coastline by doing this removal of the soil by dredging which is again another activity which you can plan this is the jetty that is located off kadalur which we designed in 2007 and 8 uh, basically 2 km away into the ocean which is the purpose of doing such thing is basically to avoid dredging because if you keep the jetty very close every day every uh, year you have to do the maintenance dredging which is very expensive so you just put the jetty on the water side only thing is the transfer of cargo by pipeline from jetty to land there is no bridge 
So, you could see the purpose and the structures are designed in such a way that this can survive for open sea conditions, cyclonic condition. In fact, this jetty has, has survived two cyclones within last two years. Every year we get a cyclone exactly crossing at this location. Multi-purpose harbor, I think this is something that you will see around uh, you know many major ports and harbors in our country. If you go to Chennai port, this is basically the Enur port. You can see the breakwater and this breakwater is protecting the inner area from external sea conditions. So, that the berths located inside is exposed to lower sea state conditions. So, the, the ships and vessels coming inside can transfer cargo without much problem. So, comparison to this, you see this is open sea condition, you cannot use this jetty all the time. Whenever there is a high sea condition, you cannot bring the ship closer. Whereas, when you are inside, you could do most of the time except maybe a severe cyclone. So, that is the difference you can see uh, between uh, all weather and uh, open sea ports. All of them involve one thing important, the retaining structures. For example, if you look at this, you have to retain the, the soil in this peripheral area, so that the soil is not getting eroded and uh, basically you will construct some kind of wall. That is why we need to learn about what is that, it is basically a retaining wall or sometimes we call it a key wall. You see this jetty is also located outside the coastline, but then protected by a big breakwater on the sea side. So, that the incoming waves will be diverted and protecting the jetty within that area. So, this is another type of idea where uh, you can uh, have design of a breakwater. I think some of you might be already having some idea. Breakwater is nothing but a barrier wall. You can actually construct a RC wall. In some places we do actually instead of rock dumping, we construct a wall using RC, but then the construction itself is quite difficult because it is in water. So, you need to think about how we can do a, a construction of a sea wall in the middle of a ocean. You have to think about it, it is not feasible. So, you need to first of all fill up soil, then construct the wall, then remove the soil. So, many times people do that, but the easiest way is to do a rock dumping of certain height, certain width. So, that it will be stable against the sea waves coming from outside. So, this side is exposed to sea waves and the jetty is well protected. All of them involve one important aspect is the soil mechanics, because this is going to be a huge structure which is going to be resting on the seabed. Over a period of time, if it is going to settle, we just make, need to make sure that the calculations are made for the soil mechanics. How do we build pile foundation in coastal structures? Most of the time, uh, you know, you will see 99 percent will use concrete piles. I think you will see the difference uh, in cost very high. If you look at a steel pile versus concrete pile, most of them will be circular in shape. Very rarely we use square or rectangular cross sections for onshore structures. Sometimes people do use, but for coastal and offshore applications, we never use. Uh, I think we learned about that last semester regarding uh, the circular sections providing efficient form of several kind including strength and hydrodynamic efficiency. So, that is why we use circular shapes. So, these circular shapes helps also in construction and uh, you can see here circular shape means you can use that circular hollow section piles readily available as pipes. So, you can use it. So, in construction of uh, circular solid RC piles, the, the sequence you can see in the picture, when you actually make a hole in the sea, uh, sea bed or in the soil, it has to be stable. Like if you go to uh, villages or even in uh, cities, open excavation foundation, you might have seen, just do a excavation and make sure that the soil does not fall down, we may actually do a side shuttering some places. Some places the ground is very good you simply make a open excavation and just make the foundation, because it is only shallow depth. But here we are talking about several meters. So, when you excavate inside something like this, what will happen? The soil will collapse. So, what we need is a shuttering. So, what is why we just drive a steel pipe 
of smaller thickness up to a depth where the soil is stable after which even if you do actually excavation soil is going to be almost not going to fall down. So, the method of construction of concrete piles is very simple drive a liner excavate the soil by several means you have a agar boring or chisel and bale many many methods are there. So, you just remove the soil somehow and stabilize the soil by means of a, a denser fluid pumped inside that means the pressure created by the fluid inside is higher than the outside. So, that you are the soil without the liner is going to be sustaining without falling down. So, normally is a denser fluid is nothing but uh, bentonite slurry it is very similar to cementitious material, but with a specific viscosity and density you pump inside continuously and basically will sustain this soil will not fall down and then you replace this area with concrete. So, what will happen concrete is denser than this fluid this fluid will come out and uh, before that you lower the reinforcement cage and pump in the concrete the concrete will displace the bentonite slurry out and leave it for several days which will make the concrete cured. So, the construction of marine concrete piles is obviously a long term process it will take probably 2 days 3 days the whole process of driving a liner excavating the soil pumping bentonite slurry and putting the reinforcement cage and filling concrete by tremie and then curing. So, you could see it is not a very simple process. So, if you have several piles it may take a longer time. So, this method why we need to understand why I was just talking about this. Now, you have created an interface between the superstructure which is going to sit on top of this basically here and the soil and the interface needs to be understand because the interface partly having a steel casing and partly the concrete is directly exposed you see here at the bottom concrete is directly in touch with the soil. Now, the load is applied to the top we need to understand how the load transfer going to happen from the structure to the pile pile is also a structure in fact, it is a it can be a concrete structure it can be a steel structure then from that part to the soil somehow we need to transfer and that is where we need to understand. So, that the design can be easily performed. So, that is why we need to know how it is constructed I think I have explained that procedure in uh, in this line form. So, if you are asked to write you can read this uh, procedure is exactly what I explained there. How do we construct a retaining wall for coastal structures very similar except that it is not in circular shape it is in rectangular, but uh, along the length of the wall only difference is the liner may not be used because driving a liner of such kind is not feasible because it is longer in length. So, what we normally do is we try to do this construction without the liner, but of course, only up to the certain depth maybe we can put a guide wall which will be either steel plate or it can be a concrete wall, but only about 1 meter half a meter just to avoid collapsing of top soil, but the remainder has to be self sustaining using bentonite slurry. So, the construction is not feasible when you have water on the right side is not it because it is exposed. So, what we normally do is we fill up soil here on this side and make a slope stable slope and construct the wall after the construction of the wall you remove this soil by dredging or by other means. So, you can see the difficulty if it is a pile you do not need to worry because the liner is providing interface between the water and inside whereas, here we have a problem of construction. So, in here of course, one one thing is very clear you cannot get any strength from this soil on the left side because the right side is there is no soil. So, you will be able to transfer the load only the part of the wall below the dredged level which is basically this most of the olden day berth is constructed using this type of idea if you go to Chennai port or many of the British time ports you know uh, basically uh, construction using either this type of ideas of making concrete wall or sometimes gravity wall you will see from uh, this type of picture something like this. M many of the olden days uh, ports 
constructed during British period is simply aligning and just keeping big big concrete blocks or even rocks so that they are stable. But of course, this is feasible only when you have very good ground below the dredge level otherwise what will happen it will keep sinking. See the other idea is the retaining wall needs to be taking sustained loading from the activities of the potent harbor. So, that is why we need to have sufficient strength in the wall itself as a structural element and then sufficient strength in the soil to take the horizontal load because you will see that the surcharge is going to be very large the potent harbor activity you will have cranes you will have transfers. So, you will have a stacking of material. So, you will have a huge surcharge wherein is a simple soil mechanics to transfer the load horizontally and sustain reasonable deflection. What is that reasonable deflection we need to verify whether it is a 1 meter or 5 mm that will govern the design of this wall and the penetration of the imagine if this wall is not penetrating so much if it is only just half a meter what will happen the whole wall will be drifting horizontally. So, we need to have sufficient embedment of the foundation into the ground or you could also come up with an idea of sustaining lesser deflection by means of holding this wall backwards. But one of the important thing is the failure plane you know even you have such a system you have to have the retaining wall to hold this anchor should be away if this is whole thing is within this failure block the whole thing will. So, that is the, the major important activity that you need to look at when you are designing an anchored wall needs to make sure that the anchor itself is away and the failure plane does not cross each other the failure plane of the, the retaining wall and the anchor wall or anchor block have to be separated. So, that they are otherwise what will happen the stresses on the soil from this and this will overlap there will be double stresses the soil will fail terribly. And then sometimes we do this kind of idea most of the recent design we have done for ports Chennai port or uh, the others will be using uh, a relieving type of platform where you see here the, the loads from the harbor activity is directly transferred to a pile not going as a lateral pressure to the, the front wall. So, you can see here how we have manipulated that the load is taken directly by this and going down to the soil here. So, that the surcharge pressure horizontal pressure on the, the vertical wall is limited only to the soil behind. So, the surcharge is taken directly to the. So, this is some idea where if the soil conditions are very bad for example, the retaining wall here the soil is very soft you will not be able to design in such cases of course, slightly expensive, but then at least we are able to find a solution. Just to give you an idea of variety of kinds some cases we have done this kind of idea where the pile is in front wall is at the back again uh, depending on the situation you have to design it. Anchor block uh, versus the gravity type gravity type is almost similar only thing is, is the stability is obtained by uh, its own weight provided if, if the soil and the ground conditions permit because otherwise it will not work out. A typical picture of a recent project which uh, we were doing in uh, in Qatar you can see here uh, the existing ground conditions are like this. So, simply prepare the ground dump the concrete blocks of prefabricated with variety of sizes with the uh, interlocking you can see here interlocking shear interlocking and then just fill up the remainder of the portion by uh, layered engineered fill and prepare the ground. So, you can make this idea. So, what we are avoiding here if you make this one up here you need to dredge this area. So, by doing this you avoided completely any removal of the seabed soil by dredging which is quite good. And also you have created a new space which is basically not occupying the existing land space. So, reclamation is together. So, most of the reclamation is like this you know you create a wall and fill up the gap between the land and the wall itself some other uh, type of constructions where you have jetties built away from the coast there is nowhere near. So, you can see you can use a steel pile simply driven into the ground and construct the deck or you can construct a 
concrete wall, a uh, concrete pile, and then construct the deck. The only difference is every ma material has to be transported from coastline to this particular place, no access. So, that makes slightly difficult for construction, but otherwise the procedure is exactly same. So, you see here in this, this one, there is no concrete involved. You take a circular hollow section, drive it, and achieve sufficient capacity from the pile depth embedded into the ground. Now, you see here this, this end is open, this is not closed. If you are not having clear idea, the pipe is open ended, that is why sometimes we call it open ended pipe pile, because if you close it what will happen? You may not be able to drive, the amount of resistance that will develop during driving will be very large that you would not be able to drive. So, that is why we drive it open ended, but alternatively you can also make a hole in the ground and put this pile and do a concrete all around. Sometimes we do this whenever you encounter a very hard rock for example, but still we want to go for steel pile. So, you can actually drill hole in the ground and simply place the pipe and do a concrete grout, but very expensive that is why many times we do not prefer to use this. So, so far I think you have got a clear idea of the class of structures that is being constructed on uh, coastal areas or maybe on land. Now, we will quickly look at uh, offshore structures basically for uh, hydrocarbon exploration. I think most of you are very familiar. So, the purpose for the offshore platform is to do drilling and production of oil and gas. You might see this picture in the earlier uh, lectures, variety of class of structures wherein we require some kind of foundation either it is a fixed steel pipe uh, foundation here or other classes of foundation to hold back the floating structures. It could be suction anchors or it could be gravity type anchor. So, you cannot live away with the, the foundation design for any offshore uh, type of project. A typical uh, jacket where the pile foundations are focused at the four corners. So, you can see here the purpose why we do this instead of distributing the number of foundations to everywhere. This will be effective because all the loads are decoupled at the extreme points of the, the structures, especially when you have a rectangular portal frame and you have a horizontal load, you have a vertical load. I think when we were looking at the design course, you know, if you apply the horizontal load, it will be decoupled to the maximum at the extreme points. So, if you put a pile foundation at the middle, it will be of not much use. It can only carry the local vertical load coming from the deck structure. So, if you locate them further apart, two things will happen. The decoupling distance becomes larger, the magnitude of load arising from the horizontal loads will be reduced. I think we did a simple problem. If you apply a horizontal load, the decoupling will be moment divided by the distance between the two foundation locations. So, that is why you keep the foundation as much as to the, the corners, so that the decoupled forces on the foundation will be minimal. Also, you do not want to have too many piles in offshore systems, because as you know very well, many more you can actually instead of having 12 only here, you can have 20 of them, but then as we discussed yesterday, minimizing risk is the most important in offshore uh, projects, because you want to reduce the time that you spend offshore. The more the time that you stay, the higher the risk with respect to many aspects, risk with respect to exposure to sea conditions, risk with respect to accidents, risk with respect to supply. So, you can see you the lesser the time you spend is better. So, that is why minimize the number of foundations that you require to construct or drive or install. Many times we keep to corners, some cases you may actually have foundation here and here all depends on the design configurations. It is a typical platform you can see here is a 8 leg with uh, 12 numbers of corner piles. You could have many number of solutions to this, this is not the fixed uh, idea that every 8 leg jacket will have only 12 number of piles. You may have 4 piles, you may have 8 piles depending on the magnitude of loads that is coming at this location and the type of soil that you actually have at the site. The, the other types of uh, uh, 
foundations normally used for uh, FPSOs is suction caissons for mooring lines. You can actually simply replace this one with a gravity type big concrete block. Many times we do this depending on the magnitude of load you know what it has to survive is the drag load coming from the floating systems and has to sustain with a minimum displacement. Several, several times we use uh, fluke anchors if you see ships standing outside the harbor area they have the anchors which are simply a big size weight with a specific shape so that it can go into the soft ground and when the load is applied it will be resisting against dragging. So, we call it drag anchors sometimes, but they are temporary because you want to remove them next time when you want to relocate the ship you simply have to pull out and remove them. Whereas, these FPSOs are going to be permanent for a longer period of time. So, you want to have some kind of better system. So, you can also drive a pile instead of this kind of large diameter many many options you can drive a pile very similar to a fixture platform or you can have a large cup like what you see here is an inverted cup simply put onto the ground. We will talk about this section case on uh, you know the concept by which it is achieving its capacity in, in I think in several classes later. Then we have uh, TLPs you can see here TLP the load transfer is slightly different you know part of the load is taken by the buoyancy because it is a floating system, but then you also have tethers or so called vertical mooring lines is you can call them and holding them in vertical position from heave movement you know. So, you need to have sufficient anchor capacity so that does not come out and uh, basically of gravity type pile type you can design either way, but the gravity loads are taken by the buoyancy horizontal loads will get transmitted to these tethers, but not fully because they are flexible. So, you will be allowing the system to move horizontally. So, part of the load will go as the tether moves, but most of the loads are resisted by buoyancy in vertical condition. So, TLPs also do have a pile foundation or gravity foundation depending on the magnitude of loads and design. Like the FPSOs you have a uh, tout mood the FPSO with a turret. So, you can see here you will require a good size foundation it could be anchors or it could be pile foundations. Jack up I think last time we discussed this jack up in our design class quite substantially and you could see here uh, computation of bearing capacity for the spud sitting on the seabed is an important aspect in the drilling uh, time because it is every time you are going to relocate this jack up. So, every time you have to do the foundation design make sure that it is able to sustain the loads during the duration of one year or, uh, or so for drilling purposes and basically every time when you relocate the jack up will be a new project unlike jackets is installed one time and one design whereas, the jack ups you have to do just every time new type of soil new type of environment new type of load conditions. I think this picture you might have seen the, the, the soil plays a major role in the stability itself and uh, you must make sure that it does not also have uh, instability against rotation. I think we discussed about this problem uh, in detail basically the, the levelness of the ground evenness of the layers. So, a lot of studies needs to be carried out before you can uh, establish that the jack up can be lowered at this particular uh, site. So, now come down to final uh, three foundations that we will uh, go through in depth in this course is basically the pile foundation is primary part of this course and then we will also look at a shallow footing very similar to shallow footing is the mat foundation which is used for temporary purposes to keep the jacket in uh, equilibrium position without sinking without drifting because you are going to bring the jacket and place it on a particular site and make sure that the jacket does not sink that means we need to have a temporary foundation prior to piling and basically that is called a mud mat 
and the third class of foundation by basically for uh, gravity type of platforms we have a large base with ballast it could be solid ballast or it could be liquid ballast with and without shear keys to obtain horizontal uh, resistance from uh, passive soil pressure so these are the three types of foundation we will be looking at in uh, detail of course most part of the lecture will be focusing on pile foundation the last few sessions we will be talking about design of mud mats and gravity type of foundations the loading i think you will be familiar uh, predominantly gravity loads for gravity type of platform but for the class of structures that we are looking at uh, for jacket type of structures the larger wave loads or uh, the environmental loads from wave current and uh, wind makes the design slightly different from onshore of course you will also be designing for seismic forces which is uh, derived from your uh, gravity loading earth pressure may not be a issue for offshore structures except for coastal structures mooring and berthing loads also magnitude wise will be very smaller for offshore structures compared to the coastal structures there uh, the jetties or port and harbor structures will have a larger because you bring in a big ship whereas for offshore structures we don't bring too big a ship there you may have a smaller boats for supply we have seen this picture basically uh, last time you know the load transfer the spacing between piles the reason why we widen the base so the magnitude of reaction reduces is the best, best principle that we wanted to adopt so that you achieve actually the material does not change the configuration makes efficient form of load transfer you know that's the idea behind because you have the same diameter of the pile but then you have made wider at the base of course you can do that here but in this particular aspect we want to keep the template for driving in accurate positions similar idea and uh, the configuration of jacket is going to change the amount of loading that is going to the soil so the the types of loads that we have on these structures gravity foundations very similar principle only thing is there is no depth uh, you know more than 10 meters most of the gravity foundations will not be able to sink further so what we are looking at is sinking the gravity type of foundation to a stable ground where subsequent time bound displacements will not happen you know you need to find such type of layer and also you have reasonable depth of skirt which will provide you for horizontal stability otherwise you will have to rely purely on the frictional resistance between the soil and the foundation so the principle is very simple the stability is achieved by its own weight and most of the gravity type of platforms are built where you have a very good ground below maybe 5 meter below or slightly low higher 